Welcome to the Alolan Islands, a land of beauty and adventure, where you can do all your favorite island activities, battle intercontinental crime syndicates, enter wormholes to other dimensions, and collect stickers. Stickers? Weirdest vacation ever. Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where my Alolan form is a sunburnt tourist wearing board shorts and a fanny pack. Hey, it's time for a new Pokemon game, which means it's also time to dig into the ecological sciences to dissect the outlandish shenanigans Nintendo is trying to shove down our faces this time. And let me assure you, shenanigans are indeed afoot in the Alolan archipelago, because Game Freak has made decisions in the Pokemon Sun and Moon games that foretell a tragic future for all the cute, cuddly creatures that you've come to know and love in this series. Decisions that that actually mean catastrophic things for the ecology of this tropical paradise. In short, there is a slow poison that was purposely placed in the lore of Pokemon Sun and Moon that practically guarantees that some of your all-time favorite Pokemon go extinct on these islands. You heard that right, Pokemon Extinction, an unintended consequence of something that was intentionally programmed into these games. So what is this undiscovered threat and which Pokemon are fated to face the genetic axe? That is what we're exposing today. With seven generations of games and 805 total Pokemon before even including Mega Evolutions and Alola forms, it's easy to assume that the creators of these games are just mindlessly pumping out new designs to fill their roster of merchandisable plushies. And uh, looking at some of the creative decisions they've made, you might be justified in thinking that. Honey, I can't find my keys. Oh, oh wait, here they are. Oh, never mind, it was just a cleft key. I'm still missing those keys. Other dishonorable mentions, Doug trio with Crappy Weaves, Living Sandcastle, and Petto Bear, who, if the design didn't already clue you in that they were phoning it in, has the name Beware. Beware. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Pokemon, the highest grossing media franchise in history. That's no exaggeration, by the way. Pokemon beats out Star Wars at number two. Pokemon has earned $55 billion, topping Star Wars' total of $42 billion. And you have none other than quality designs like Beware to thank for that. Still looking for those keys though. Anyway, although some may be a bit phoned in, others demonstrate that a lot of thought actually went into these designs and backstory. Case in point, the Alolan Pokedex entry for Donald Trump. <laughs> I mean, Young Goose. You can tell the difference because Young Goose's hair looks more realistic. Anyway, the Pokedex tells us that despite the fact that Young Goose debuted in Generation 7 with the release of Sun and Moon, it's not actually native to the Alolan region. Young Goose did not originally live in Alola, but was imported from another region. According to Nintendo, Young Goose was introduced to the Alolan region to deal with the exploding Rattata population, which, as anyone who's ever played a Pokemon game before can tell you, Rattata overpopulation is a major problem. Seriously, kill them all, Young Goose, go get them! Unfortunately, introducing Young Goose to Alola didn't curb the Rattata's numbers so much as drive them into the urban areas of the islands and force them to become nocturnal, giving birth to the Alolan variant of Rattata, which is now a dark type. This in turn helps them to survive since Young Goose is active during the day. And how impressive is that? All of that thought just to explain a simple new Pokemon form. I mean, love or hate these games, you gotta hand it to the Pokemon team. They really thought that one through. Except they didn't think it through far enough. Because in creating this backstory, Game Freak has actually put a death sentence on thousands of innocent Pokemon across the Alolan Islands. You see, Young Goose being imported into Alola means that it's technically an invasive species. In real life, an invasive species is any living organism, plant or animal, that's not native to an ecosystem. And while that may not sound all that threatening, approximately 42% of all endangered species on Earth are on those at-risk lists because of an invasive species that wound up in its part of the world. What happens is that this new invasive species doesn't have natural predators in that part of the world, and as a result, it can breed and spread quickly, taking over the area. And since local plants and animals haven't had to deal with this creature before, they haven't evolved defense mechanisms against it. In just a short amount of time, the invasive species takes over, causing the underprepared local wildlife life to go extinct. So yeah, good job humans, you brought Young Goose to Alola to eat the Rattata, the Rattata adapted and found a
a way to survive, which means that now you're left with a huge population of young goos that have to eat something else and are gonna find it no matter what. After all, as the Pokedex entry says, With its sharp fangs, it will bite anything. It wanders around in a never-ending search for food, which means someone else is on the chomping block. And you know it's gonna be one of those cute little ones. But to find out exactly which mons get the munch, we need a trip to the history books. You see, the young goose Ratata fiasco actually has parallels to the real world. In the 1800s, Hawaii, yeah, the Hawaii that Pokemon's Alola region happens to be based on, had problems with wild rats eating crops. The cropper's solution to this was to import mongooses to deal with them. Young goose? Mongoose? Hey, I said the Pokemon team did their homework. I didn't necessarily say they didn't plagiarize. Anyway, the mongoose situation might have worked out if it weren't for the fact that the mongoose, which hunt during the day, seldom crossed paths with the nocturnal rodents that were only active at night. Slow clap, humanity. Slow clap. Next time you think about importing a foreign species and upsetting the balance of an entire local ecosystem and potentially sending a bunch of animals into permanent extinction, maybe you should do your homework first. And to this day, the mongoose continue to be a problem across most of the Hawaiian islands. So what did the mongooses target for food instead of the rats? Well, basically anything. Small mammals, reptiles, insects, but most of all, the eggs and hatchlings of ground-nesting birds and endangered sea turtles. In fact, on Puerto Rico, the mongoose has been the cause of at least seven amphibian and reptile extinctions, and in Jamaica was the primary cause of the extinction of a lizard, a snake, two birds, and a species of rat. Now, I tracked all the areas young goose appear across Alola, and let me tell you, it's everywhere. Routes 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. You can already start to see how this invasive species is literally taking over the entirety of Mele Mele and Akala Islands. And that's not even the fullest extent of this. Its evolved form, Gumshoes, is everywhere late game, appearing on routes 10, 11, 15, 16, and 17, otherwise known as the entirety of Ula Ula Island. In short, this isn't just one island's wildlife at risk, it is the entire ecology of the whole Alolan archipelago that's about to suffer a massive multi-species extinction. Then, knowing that young goos prefer to hunt close to the ground and only during the day, I eliminated any Pokemon who were active at night or tended to stay in trees. Lastly, there were a ton of bug Pokemon across all of these routes, but bugs have huge populations, and it would be difficult for young goos to really damage the overall numbers of those populations, so I didn't really consider them at risk. In the end, I was left with the following list of Pokemon that will, in the near future, be completely wiped out from the islands by the overpopulation of Young Goose and Gumshoes, Slowpoke, Vullaby, Delibird, and brace yourself, because here come some real fan favorites, Igglybuff, Pichu, and Eevee. Every single one of these Pokemon species will be wiped clean from the Alolan Isles unless something is done to combat the young goose infestation. That is six entire species suddenly gone from an ecosystem. You can bet that's gonna throw some food chains into chaos. Luckily, all of them are species that appear elsewhere in the Pokemon world, so no one species would truly be gone forever, or at least not gone forever solely because of young goose. Because that's not where the story ends. Young goose is only one of the invasive species brought onto Alola by humans. For example, according to the Dex entry in Pokemon Sun, Grimer was brought in to solve a problem with garbage, developed over time into this form. Besides the difference in color, look at those teeth. The Pokedex entry from Moon would tell us that those are actually, quote, lumps of toxins. If one falls off, lethal poisons leak out. So the second species inserted onto these islands by humans just so happens to contain lethal poisons. And since Grimers are specifically used to treat polluted wastewater, you can bet that those toxic crystals are gonna do a lot of damage to the sea life around Haoli City and the Cape of Ula Ula Island. Then there's Makuhita, also brought into the region by humans. Since these guys train themselves by slamming their bodies into trees, the plant life around Route 2 is absolutely gonna suffer under his body slams. That in turn affects the nesting sites for birds found there like Spiro. And lastly, perhaps the single biggest threat to the islands, Meowth. Meowth, that's right. Yet again, the Pokedex tells us, this Pokemon was not originally found in Alola. Human actions caused a surge in their numbers and they went feral. Honestly, it's another story ripped straight from Hawaii where feral cats have established populations on all eight of the main Hawaiian islands. In fact, wild cats are listed among the most harmful invasive species globally by the Internet 
International Union for the Conservation of Nature, contributing to the extinction of 33 species. Each year, wild cats kill approximately 2.4 billion birds. The Meowth invasion in Alola, meanwhile, means even more likelihood that bird Pokemon start diminishing in number, absolutely putting Piggy Peck on the menu, and, since it shares some routes with Young Goose, basically ensuring the disappearance of Pichu. Huh! Way to treat your series mascot there, Pokemon. Seems like even Game Freak is sick of Pikachu at this point. In short, the Alolan ecosystem is just flat out screwed. We already know that there's a high probability that six species will fall victim to the young goose alone, and who knows how many others will suffer similar fates thanks to the non-native Grimers, Makuhitas, and Meowths. It used to be that the phrase gotta catch them all was just for completionists looking to fill out their Pokedex, but in Alola, the phrase takes on a whole new meaning. Gotta catch them all. All the individual members of the invasive species because if you don't, the ecosystem of these islands will be permanently ruined. Who knew that a game about cuddly creatures would continue to be so incredibly depressing? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. You know what's not going extinct anytime soon? Quality Pokemon theories! Hit that subscribe button to make sure that you catch them all! And if you want to learn more about how natural selection has affected the designs of individual Pokemon species across these series of games, well then click the box to the right. Now if you'll excuse me, I think Hello Neighbor is coming out soon. Huh.